Namaste. You're already asleep. Can I say namaste? namaste? Now you're awake. So today, I'm going to be talking about connecting and sharing to nurture. What I'm going to cover today is the importance of connecting and sharing locally, nationally, and globally. We're going to be looking at a successful model, the National Hindu Students Forum UK, as an example. What can Hindu Students Youth Network learn from NHSF? We're also going to be looking at the journey of two individuals, and I'm going to be sharing a case study which happened at the Queen Mary's University of London, where we had a Hindu society protest. And finally, summing this all up, how we can, as a forum, connect and share to nurture. Sangatan me shakti hai. In unity, there is strength. We must have one voice. We must. Why? Look at other religious groups. Look at the Muslims, look at the Jews, look at Christians. They are all existing extremely well in society because they have one voice. They have representation. And I'm very sorry to say, we as Hindus do not. We can stand on a platform and talk about how we're brilliant, how we're the best, how we're fantastic, but I might get in trouble for saying this today, but we are not. We are actually at the bottom. You may be a fantastic doctor in your hospital. You may be a fantastic lawyer in your practice. You may be the best engineer in your country. But, to, but, but individually, you are just one. If you unite together, look at this, it becomes a fist. And that's what we must learn to do. But coming together is not just it. We must expand. Expand to be together. Like I mentioned, we're all doing great work in our countries. But um, we must all come together and expand together. And by, we can only do that if we share all our resources, we share our experiences together, we help one another. Vasudev Kutumbakam, the whole world is one family. In your family, if your sister, your mother, your brother, your grandfather, if they need help, do you all go out and help them? Yes or no? You help them. So if this world is your whole family, you must help each other. And, that's that, and I think that is where we as Hindus are lacking. That is where we are failing. We are not seeing each other as one family. Looking at achieving excellence. So you're together, you're expanding, you're getting better. But we've got to do this by doing it in the best way. There has to be a strategy and a need that we are achieving excellence in our fields, becoming experts and dominating each area and industry in our respective countries to have a say. We all must aim to be the next Swami Vivekananda, the next Modi, the next Gandhi. To do this, we must work together, share and connect ideas, facilities and resources globally to push and guide one another. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be looking at the National Hindu Students Forum UK as an example, as a, as a model, as a structure. NHSF was founded in 1991. It was founded because a couple of university kids were sitting around at the university and they were thinking, you know what, we've come away from our homes, living, living far away, we need another home away from home. And that is how NHSF was formed. To say that, you know, we have a strong identity, we have a Hindu identity while we're at university, so we do not forget our values, we do not forget our culture. There are affiliated membership of over 150,000 people nationally with the NHSF. There are 50 branches across the UK, and you can see the following diagram, which has a number of different facts. Um, on the, for example, there are 518 artis which take place in the year, and during these artis, one thing the NHSF really proclaims is, don't just practice your religion, explain what you are doing, why you are doing it, understanding what you are doing. Devotion and practicing is one thing, but know what you are doing and the reason behind it. So looking at the core activities of NHSF, and also we're going to be looking at the advisory board and how that is important. Core activities are things such as learning events, server activities, national training days, national CAL competition, yearly event, an AGM, uh, as I mentioned, weekly art, these debates, workshops, a number of different ev innovative events to promote thermic activities, remembering that, you know, we're based in a country outside of Bharat. So it's about making sure that you can interest these students, but do it in a way that will have fun for them. So for example, I remember when I was at King's College um, Hindu Society, we said, you know what, everybody loves in Thakshri. They love Bollywood, they enjoy it. So why not? We have a shift puja in the, in, in the morning, and in the evening we have Antakshri. And before that, we used to have a Hanuman Chalisa, which used to take place every week. Only about 30, 40 people turned up. After this event, 
We used to have 100 people at least every Hanuman Chalisa because they were interested and we lured them in. And that's what we have to remember. That yeah, we can't shy away from things that people enjoy, but try and amalgamate it with our culture, with our value and with our spirituality. So the advisory board. Now this, when you're looking at a model, when you're looking at organization, Hindu students, they come and they go. But you know, once you finish university, you do your bit for the society and you go. But an advisory board are members um, who they really look to, they're, they're there for a long time, they've been there for 21 years, and they're there as a guiding force and support unit. So we must, so whenever you're building your structure, you're building societies in your own areas and countries, ensure that you have members and founders where people are going to be willing to commit for a number of years to help. So learning from NSF, as I mentioned, the structure has been set up in such a way that it's been flourishing for 21 years. Interaction with other bodies and government. Living outside of this of Bharat, it's important to make sure that the Hindu societies have the correct interaction and with the government and other bodies as such. For example, the, Hindu, the um, National Hindu Students Forum started an association called the Hindu Lawyers Association. And that's getting together a connect group of Hindu lawyers and utilizing that and dealing with the government. And when there was a point of issue, especially relating to Hindu dharma, there were any problems faced by members, what, what always happened is HLA was always called upon. Training and personal development. So being part of NHSF doesn't mean that you just do your bit for the summer to society, your student years and go. It's about training those who join from chapter level to teaching things like leadership, giving presentations, and utilizing thermic principles to achieve success and become well-rounded individuals. From there, people can go and join national committees through passing interviews, and here you learn much more. How to do with other Hindu organizations, sponsors, businesses, governmental bodies, and how to represent the Hindu Samaj. Following this, many think the journey is over. However, it's only just begun. After all the training and development tools spent on these individuals, should organizations such as NHSF have a mechanism to utilize these talents in the Samaj? Here comes the alumni network. NHSF's alumni network was started a couple of years ago to ensure we place individuals who came out of NHSF after student life into strategic positions in other organizations such as governmental bodies, he he heading other Hindu organizations, conducting projects to benefit Samaj and several projects. Now we're going to look at the journey of two individuals just to show you that when you enter university, where can you go from there if you want to be part of a Hindu Samaj? So we have Prinal Latwani and myself on the other side. I'll go through Prinal's and you can read mine at the same time. So Prinal joined Manchester Hindu Society. He then took a strategic position in the society. He became the General Secretary at Manchester Hindu Society. He then became the legal team coordinator in his first year on the National Committee of NHSF. Then he took a national position and became the general secretary in 2010 to 2012. After that, it was time for him, it, Prinal as myself, we both felt like we've done our bit for the Samaj, we've done our bit for society, it's time to say and wave goodbye. And it would have been very easy to do that. But we both were, through the guidance of advisory board and other members of the Hindu Samaj, we were guided and Prinal is now the president of the C City Hindu Network since 2013. And, and that is what I'm trying to say, that actually we have all these individuals, but collectively we must work to ensure that everybody is strategically placed in the right way. And we can only do that if we are connecting and if we are sharing. So, the protest. What happened? So this was in 2009. I was president of the National Hindu Students Forum at the time. And what happened was the Queen Mary's Hindu Society as part of a Seva week, which NHSF organized every year, they organized Hanuman Chalisa sessions every single day um, for one week. They booked the student union. Um, there was a multi-faith center where every faith is allowed to book a center. And they booked this venue, uh, a room from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. every day that week. The room was also al allocated to the Islamic center from 12 o'clock till 6 o'clock. So right after that, the Hindu students were going to take place their Hanuman Chalisa and discussions. So what happened? Then... They, the Hindu students went on the first day at 6 p.m. ready with their murti in their hands and they walked up to the center and wanted to take, uh, take, start their um, puja. They knocked on the door and I think about four, five, six thug looking guys came outside 
and uh, said, you know, you're not getting the center. We have, it's Ramzan, we've got things going on, you're not having it. So the students were confused. What do we do? They went to the student union, knocked on their door. They got no answers. That same evening, they spoke to uh, the chancellor. The chancellor gave them no, no, no effort. They then knocked on NHSF's door. And, it, and we spoke to them and we said, okay, here's, here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to make sure we write letters, we speak to the right people and see what can happen. That was all done. So how did we deal with it? The letters were ignored. The student union's answer was, take in any other room in, this, in the building, we'll give you another room. So a multi-faith center, which should be used for every single religion, and every religion should be given ev equal existence, Hindus were told, go and take another room. And many of the society members wanted to do that. They said, you know what, it's an easy option, we still get our room, we still get to do what we need to do. And so, as in, with National Hindu Students Forum, we came to the center and said, no, nope, this is not fair. We get to use that room. You need to make sure you speak to the other organization and tell them, give us a chance and let us use the room. You can use it in your allocated time. Let us use it in our allocated time. So we went there on the next day. And once again, the security, we went with security guards. Um, and I think there were two members of the um, police there present as well. And at that time, the Muslim students opened the door and did not let anybody in. And they threatened and verbally abused a number of us who were standing there and said, we will not allow you to use it. Leave or there will be dire consequences. At this point, we decided that, you know what? The, probably the best, best way is to get another room. And a number of people were saying that, but I was absolutely shocked to hear that. Every single time, Hindus, every single time, we take a back stance. We always say, forget it. Let's just take an easy road. And this time we weren't going to. So the next day, we con contacted the British media, we contacted a number of Hindu organizations, and around 250 to 300 people turned up outside the student union, and we decided that everything was gonna be done with non-violence. There was gonna be no violence, but we were gonna make sure we got that room. So, what happened? We went there, and um, once again, there were even more people there against us, threatening to say, you were not gonna get the room. So, what was the decision? Everybody's looking at me as a president to say, Gajal, what should we do? Should we just take another room? There's a bigger room they're giving us. It's outside the center. And I absolutely refused. I said, I'm going to sit down on the floor outside. We're in the UK, remember. It's freezing cold. I think it even rained at one point. And we put our murti there. And we sat down and I started doing the Hanuman Chalisa. I turned around about 15 minutes later and there were about 300 people sitting behind me continuously doing that with us. For me... We said we're not going to move. The, the noise and the power we must have resonated, that electrifying atmosphere, made people in the other room realize that, you know what, they've booked this place, let's all leave. And that room was vacated that very evening, and we were able to conduct the Hanuman Chalisa in that e building. Since then, what's happened is the, hun the Queen Mary's Hindu Society has uh, been given the room, they've been given a dedicated room where they're able to conduct all the Hindu operations from there. So, what are the lessons learnt? The lessons learnt is, in this occasion, yes, we stood our ground. But do we do that every time? No. Every time, Hindus usually take a step back. And now, we as Hindus, in your respective countries, you must stand up for what is right and be able to proclaim Hindu dharma in the right manner. So, looking at history as a lesson, we must realise that you know, we must learn from, from these lessons. We might be doing this. One in six people are, are Hindus in this world. Yet, it looks like there are even less than that because we don't stand up for what is right. You might be fantastic in the profession, but taking Hindu resurgence forward, we do not do that. So in the present day, and using and this conference, what we're going to be doing is, is doing a SWOT analysis. We must analyze our strengths, our weaknesses, look at our threats, look at the opportunities present out there. And for the future, we must all unite, connect and share together to make sure Hindu resurgence is at the forefront. Namaste.